good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to our marketing club webinar series for the final session of this year's webinar season we've got linkedin expert george honeyball with us who will be doing a demonstration of the linkedin platform and also giving some practical advice on how to build a quality linkedin profile and that will certainly get you noticed if you'd like to share any thoughts about today's webinar um, or indeed any of our webinars or events um, on the social channels uh, then you can use the hashtag CIM events. Uh, we do love to see all of your comments on the social, so please do get involved and uh, certainly let us know what you think of today's session. So uh, before I hand over to George, I'll just very quickly explain what the Marketing Club is. So it was created primarily to help students uh, get the most from their CIM accredited degree and prepare them for a career in marketing. Um, the accredited degree program uh, enables students to gain a professional marketing qualification by taking advantage of the exemptions uh, that the degree provides. Throughout the academic year, we run a series of webinars tailored to meet your needs, showing the latest thinking, the latest trends and techniques in real world marketing delivered by industry experts. We have a dedicated page on our website where you'll be able to watch previous marketing uh, webinars. Um, and also access articles and insights from podcasts and also from our content hub. So if you're, a, if you're a university student, you can sign up now to receive the Marketing Club newsletter. All you'll need to do is take a photo of the QR code that you can see on screen. Alternatively, you can hop onto our website and find the Marketing Club webpage within the qualifications drop-down menu. Each edition of the newsletter will provide you with content designed to support your studies and actively manage your professional development by keeping you up to date with the latest trends, latest innovations and concepts in the marketing industry. So it really is worth signing up. OK, so that's enough from me. Um, I'd now like to hand you over to our guest speaker, George Honeyball. Um, so if you want to turn your webcam on, George, I'll pass things over to you. And uh, the floor is yours when you are ready. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is George Honeyball, and I am based here in a cold and wet England <laughs> right now. So um, I've been in the UK for three years now. So um, I joined a, a little company that makes Windows, um, otherwise known as Microsoft, three years ago. Um, they basically paid for me to move over um, here to the UK from um, a normally sunny um, South Africa. So um, yes, I'm sort of new to um, the UK, but I had lived here before as well. So I do know what life is like here. Um, obviously working for Microsoft, we own a company called LinkedIn and I did use LinkedIn for a number of years before, um, both as a corporate user and also as a LinkedIn recruiter. Um, user and I will explain the difference a little bit later. So hopefully you can all see my screen right now. Um, and then as Lee said, please, if you do have any questions, post them in the chat and I will try and get to them during the session as well. So just to explain, when you first sign into LinkedIn, there are a number of ways that you can do it. You can use your Gmail account. I think you can use Facebook as well, or you can use an email address. The system will obviously then confirm your identity by sending you a confirmation email, and then you will be taken to this page. So obviously this is a vanilla page. It's brand new, it's never been used before. So typically what you will see, the system will pick up your location. So that is very important for LinkedIn, is obviously knowing where physically you're situated. And as you can see here, automatically LinkedIn is already starting to send me updates about news in the UK and this is LinkedIn so this is a very very new feature in LinkedIn called LinkedIn news so they now publish information relevant to where you are physically located um, and what's also important to note is on the right hand side you will see something called ad so people pay to advertise on LinkedIn as well so a lot of the information that you see on LinkedIn is actually paid for by other companies and that is one of the ways that LinkedIn generates income. 
The other way that they generate income is by having a premium license. So you will see at, at the top of my screen, it is inviting me to join premium. It says try premium for free. And we can speak a little bit more about premium licenses a little bit later. You can see here, it's also trying to convince me to pay for my LinkedIn subscription. So LinkedIn as such is free. So their revenue is generated by adverts. And also I spoke about LinkedIn Recruiter earlier. So to be able to access LinkedIn Recruiter, you click on business and you will see over here, sorry, I can't see it. You will see here, you will see learning, you will see insights, you will see groups and find leads and advertise and post a job. So post a job is where you will use LinkedIn Recruiter. So I'm just gonna maximize my screen again. Um, so the first thing that the system wants me to do is to update my profile. So what it has picked up automatically is that I've just created this profile, but LinkedIn obviously wants to know more about me. And the reason why it wants to know more about me is they want to start connecting me with other people and building my internal network. Now, obviously that is really important. Um, as your network grows, as you publish information, as you share, for example, emails or other interesting bits of information about you, if you don't have a lot of followers, the likelihood that people are going to interact and respond and comment on your, um, your comments is going to be very low. Obviously, the more people you have, the more interaction they're going to be. If you comment on somebody else's um, profile, other people will see that as well. So LinkedIn try as much as possible to get people to connect and network as much as possible. So I'm going to click on this update profile. You will see I've not put a, a profile picture on yet. It is still very much an early stage. So I can click on profile. It is going to say to me, is this your most recent experience? So I'm just pretending to be a senior manager at CIM, which I'm not. Um, but just for, for this demonstration, I will say, yes, I am. And I will say continue. And then it's going to ask me, so it's picked up already um, through my computer settings that I'm based in the UK. It's going to ask me to confirm my postal code and that I'm based in London. So I will say, yes, I am. And I will click done. So now you will see the system has taken me to the first step and it says I've still got two more steps to take. So it's telling me who are people that you want to start following. Now, it's very important to know there is a difference between following somebody and connecting with somebody. So following people is similar to, for example, Twitter, where you will follow famous people and you will get their feeds. If they post something, you will find that. But to connect to somebody, basically that person would need to connect back and then you have a relationship with each other. So you can send each other instant messages and not have to pay for it. So I can pay as an advertiser to get credits to send messages to people, even though I'm not necessarily connected to that, pe that person. So that's another way that LinkedIn makes money. So let's say I'm gonna click on start following and what will happen is that LinkedIn will recommend pages. It will recommend people, famous people and companies as well. So you can see at the moment it's recommended pages for me. So because it saw that I'm based in the UK, it's going to recommend um, British based companies. So you can see we've got BBC, we've got the University of Law, we've got, believe it or not, Love Them or Hate Them, the Transport for London. Penguin House UK, and I can then choose to follow them or not. So let's click on a few. Um, I mean, I actually worked for a company called Tata um, Communications many years ago, so I'm going to click on follow. Um, I'm not sure why it's wanting me to follow um, LinkedIn notifications in Mexico. I don't want to do that. Bloomberg News is easy, so I'm going to click follow that. Transport for London, why not? We do use them. And then Penguin House, um, I know I've read a lot of books by Penguin House. So I will do that and I will then go back to my home page. Now, remember I've only done that additional step. So now the next step is LinkedIn is going to say to me, why don't you follow more people? So I'm going to find people that I might know. And it was now trying to take a guess of which people I might know. So I do not know any of these people. I'm not going to collect 
to connect with them. But you can see here, the system is allowing me to connect. So remember, in the previous step, it was follow. Now it is saying connect. So I can go down and you will see as I scroll down, the system will keep adding more and more people on. So you can keep scrolling forever, basically. And LinkedIn is going to keep adding people to my feed. So as I go down, it's going to keep adding that. You can see that this person has got a very interesting little um, signboard there saying that he is hiring. So he is basically using um, LinkedIn recruiter to hire people. So maybe now would be a good time to just look at people's profile pictures. People's, people's profile pictures are either really good, average, or terrible. So I think let's have a little bit of fun. So these people have shared their profiles. So it's fun for me to comment on them. So sorry if any of you are on the screen right now and I'm talking about your, your photo, please don't take it personally. I'm trying to do it in a productive way. So first of all, for me, what stands out is this Martin's profile picture. You can see, ideally, you want the person's face very clearly. So Martin is sitting off to the side. He's got light behind him, which is not great. He's also got a computer screen. So you can't really see him that well. Um, Katie also, it's quite a dark picture, so you can't see her face very clearly. I must say that this person, Mutaza, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, he's got a very clear profile picture. You can see that it's well lit. You can see his face really well, and it's not being obscured or cut off by any means. You can see Megan over here has got a little bit of hair hanging in front of her face. Um, I don't know if that is her look, but you can't really see her that well. Um, Julie, you can see her profile picture very clearly. She doesn't have a busy background like I know I do right now. Um, but that is very professional. You can see Carl has got a little bit of a side profile going on. Not always great if you want to see him. Um, he and Colin have gone for a black and white effect, which some people do to try and look different to everybody else. Personally, I prefer having a color profile picture, but you can use a black and white picture of yourself as well. Um, you can see here some people have got very busy backgrounds. You can see Jonathan's got the top of his head cut off. Um, Asia over here, um, is that the London eye that she's got in the background? You can't really see, but you can't see Aisha's face very clearly. So really important, please, if you're going to have a profile picture, make sure that you can see yourself very clearly. Um, some people trying to be artistic. If that is in the area that you're in, so you can see Gregory over here, he's kind of got a retro disco look to him. Um, if that is the industry that he's in, that's great. If it's not, I would recommend changing it as well. Also, taking holiday snaps doesn't really work that great. You can see Nicole over here. That looks like she could be in the Netherlands. I don't know if that is Amsterdam. But you can't really see Nicole really well. So I would recommend having a very clear profile picture. You can see Jack and Nihal very clear. Annalise as well. You can see her profile picture very clearly. So that is probably a good example of how you want your profile picture to be. So I'm not going to do this step just because we're in a demo environment. Typically, what I would need to do next is to add a photo. So I would be able to click on this link. And then either I could take a photo right now using my camera, or I could upload a photo as well. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. What I would like to show you very importantly, a lot of people don't know how to do this. So if you click on me, and once I've uploaded a photo, you will see my photo there. If I click on View Profile, you will see a hyperlink over here that says Edit Public Profile and URL. The URL is a uniform resource locator. Most people, when you create your LinkedIn profile for the first time, LinkedIn will give you a default URL that is really ugly and messy. So I'm going to click on that link. So remember, I clicked on Me. I clicked on View Profile and it took me to this page. And now I'm clicking on Edit Public Profile and URL. And you will see over here, if I click on this little pencil over here, it's going to show me what my profile is. And you can see it has created this terrible number. So if I want to share my LinkedIn profile, it would be linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash George dash Honeyball dash 3891612739. Now, that is not my mobile number. 
I don't know how LinkedIn created that number for me, but it is awful. So now in this space, you can go in, you can delete this, and you can put anything you want to in there. Obviously, let's try and keep it clean, remember? Don't put in something inappropriate or use inappropriate language. We try and keep it clean. So you could do anything. So I'm just going to try George H, for example. If it has been taken, LinkedIn will warn me and say that that already exists. But if it is available, you can click Save. Okay, so it says to me that URL is not available. Somebody else has tried it. So I could try something different. And I could keep doing that until I find a LinkedIn profile URL that is very easy to use. Now, that a lot of people don't know that you can do that. So please, there's a little tip that can help you. Just get your URL correctly. So you can use that in the body of your email. You can send it to people um, on social media as well. You will see many websites go in when you're setting up your profile. You can share your Twitter. You can share your LinkedIn URL. This is how you can go in and change that. I'm going to just cancel it now because I don't want to change it. And if I click home, and then, oh, it's taking me to a different page. And if I go back to me and view my profile, you will see there is the URL. So remember the one that I showed you a little bit earlier with it looks like a telephone number, but it's not my telephone number. There it is over there. And then, of course, if you change it and you update it and LinkedIn allows you to keep it, that is the URL that you will be able to use to share with other people. Um, I've been talking for about five minutes without any break, so I'm going to pause quickly and just see, um, Lise, are there any questions in the chat about anything that I've spoken about so far? So we've had uh, we've had quite a few questions come in, so thank you very much um, for submitting your questions already. Um, one question that has come in, uh, which I think is probably sort of quite pertinent to, to what you've just been um, talking about, what would you recommend to include in your header photo? Okay, great. So that is a good one. So I think, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, let's go back to finding people that you know. Um, so let's talk about the profile pictures again very briefly. So I think try and keep it clean, try and keep it professional. I know some people like to have photos with them and other loved ones as well. That can cause a little bit of confusion uh, because you make assumptions about people's gender with their names. So if you have a photo with somebody else, people might not be sure which one is you and which is somebody else. Also, you can see here Chris. Um, he has got a photo of himself and it looks like is that a video camera that he's got with him. It just kind of detracts from your profile on it. Over here, he's showing off that he's a public speaker, so it's a picture of him standing on a stage and speaking, so that might be important for his profile, so that is great. Nina also is a little bit unusual because she's got her head slightly off to the side, so that kind of stands out from the status quo. But you can see here, Jorge, you can see Fatima, their screens, their screens are quite clear, clean photo, that is what to, you want. As I mentioned earlier, ideally not too much light behind you, to distract, you want it fairly clean and simple um, and professional. You can see Katya, she's a brand manager, so she's actually holding up the product that I'm assuming that she's marketing. Um, and then also, as you can see here, Murtaza, he has hiring over here, and I'll show you in a few minutes how you can change um, the little border that you've got around your photo as well. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, please, any more questions? Uh, yeah, quite a few questions actually. Um, not necessarily sort of what you've been talking about, but there is one okay. here uh, that has said, um, how do you add an additional role within your main role? So uh, particularly sort of within the same organisation. Okay, so I think that that is part of the next step that we're going to do. So as we go in and view our profiles, what we can do is start adding our professional experience. So obviously that is really important. Um, so you can go in, so I've gone back to my profile, you can see I've still not added a photo of myself, which I should do. Also, I can add a photo in the background. So that too can have something to do with your, your um, company that you work for. It can be, for example, a nice background. You can put in a picture of yourself um, in the workplace, or it can just be, a picture of a landscape or a place that means something to you 
um, in the background, you can add that as well. So when it comes to your experience, you can see here, remember I said that I'm a senior manager of CIM, which is not true. So um, Lisa, please don't misread or don't misrepresent me. But you can go in and you can edit your experience. So you can see here I've said that I'm a senior manager, that it's a full-time job. I can specify the location. I can specify the type. So, for example, this is something new that's been added. Is it remote? Is it on-site or is it hybrid? So hybrid means that some days you're in the office, some days you're remote. Also, what is the date and time? So what would happen if I was not a manager previously and I moved into a more senior role, you would be able to do that. So I think that's what the person was saying is in a previous role, they were in CIM, but they weren't a manager. So they want to see how can I differentiate that. So I could say, let's say I started as a manager in March of this year. Um, so that would be March 2023. And obviously, because I'm currently in this role, I do not have an end date. And I would be able to save that. Then you can also change your profile heading. This is very important because when recruiters are searching for people with similar job titles, this is where they come. So try and be as accurate as you can when selecting your profile heading. Obviously, the system will prompt you and it will make recommendations. So if I click on this and change it, it will, it will give me where people have called themselves a senior manager or a manager senior or SNR, so just the, the letters SNR manager instead of senior manager, all those options will be available, but typically you want to try and keep it as clean and simple and standard as possible. Something else you can do which is really helpful is skills. You can add skills. You can search for skills as well, and then of course you can add media. So for marketing people, if they've got any promotional videos that they shot, they can add that in. If you're a journalist and you've written articles, you can add that media to you. For example, me with Microsoft, we have published videos that showcase some of Microsoft's products. So I have uploaded videos over there. So I can click Save. You will see now, oh yeah, it needs to say the industry. So I will say it's in the marketing services. And you see the system has automatically updated it. And I will save it. So now you will see I have a senior manager um, connected over here. So I can add a new position and I can go back and say that I was just a manager. And the employment type is I was full time. The company is CIM again. I'm not going to change that. Um, and you see the system now is trying to associate me with companies that it knows. The reason for that is it's going to come back eventually. And if I say I work for Microsoft, I will not be able to confirm that I work for Microsoft unless I have an email confirming that. So a lot of companies have built checks in, in place to prevent people from pretending that they work for companies that they don't pretend to work for. So I could lie and say I work for Coca-Cola because let's say I love Coca-Cola and I misrepresent myself. So these companies now are protecting their identity. So if I say I work for CIM, a software development company that's different to the CIM that we're on the call with now, that would be a problem. So I'm not, so I do not mean this one. Um, the location, I'm just going to keep it in London as I always do. And you will see the system is busy defaulting. So really important that you choose the right one, obviously, from a recognition perspective for the advertising. If I'm in London, England, the adverts I'll get will be for companies that say they want to target people living in London, in England, not London somewhere else. Location type, let's say that I'm on site. The start date, I'm gonna say that I'm not currently working in this role. And obviously I will say, let's say I started in January, 2021. And I ended, it was in March 2023. If I want to put in a description of what I did, I can put that in here. I can just say that I was marketing manager. Um, I can add skills uh, and I now save that. And you will see 
answering the question. Sorry, I've taken a long time to answer the question, but the system has picked up that it's the same company that I'm working for, but it's a different role. So I was a manager from January 2021 until March 2023, two years and three months, and I've now been promoted to a senior manager. So I don't know if that is what the person was asking, but that is typically how you would make sure that you can have this. If I want to add a new company, so let's go in and add a position, and let's say that I worked, I was um, a sales rep. Let's see if it allows me to do it. Oh, you see it says sales representative. It's trying to stop me from using slang. Um, let's say that it was part-time and it was Coca-Cola. Let's see what it does. Um, Coca-Cola. Um, so you see it gives a whole lot of Coca-Cola companies. Let's try that one over there. Let's say I was based in Atlanta. At, oh, I've spelled Atlanta wrong. That's why. And I just know because they're based in Atlanta, Georgia, that's where the head office is. They were actually a customer of mine a few years ago. Um, let's say it was remote and I'm not currently working there. And let's say I started there in January 2017 and I was there until December 2019. So I purposely left the gap over there and I click save. So the position has been added. Did you find this job on LinkedIn? Let's say I said yes. And it's going to say now that LinkedIn helped me to get this job. So I say save. And you can see it is now confirmed that I work for the Coca-Cola company. But now to verify it, it will try and send me an email to this company to confirm that I was there. And remember, it said here yeah, LinkedIn helped me get this job. So they're using that to market themselves. Now, if I want to add an additional email to that, because remember you have your corporate email address and your personal email address. So I've joined this company. Sorry, I've created this profile with my Gmail account. But now if I want to associate my CIM email address with that, I would need to validate it. And obviously I don't work for CIM, so I couldn't do that. Coca-Cola, because I said I worked for them historically, they're not going to send me an email because obviously I don't work there anymore. But if I try and say that I work for the Coca-Cola Coca company now, Coca-Cola will need me to confirm my employment with them by sending me an email to my Coca-Cola email address. We are flying through time. It is, it's half past already. Um, Leeds, any more questions? Yeah, plenty that have come in. Um, so okay. again, thank you very, thank you very much um, for submitting your questions. Please do keep them coming in, um, as we will have a little bit of a, a Q and A session um, as well at the end uh, after George has finished his live demonstration. Um, but getting back to the questions, George, yeah, as I say, loads that have come in. Um, one here that says, uh, "How much detail is enough to put under professional details?" Um. That's a really good question. So I think the key thing to realize is a lot of the information that you put, and I'm just going to go to that section that the person is, is talking about. So obviously we've started working on my profile over here. It's already starting to take shape. Um, I've still not had any profile views, obviously, because I'm still very new. Um, I've not actually followed anybody yet, so it's not surprising. Um, I've not posted anything. We've worked on my experience um, and we've looked at what's happening over here. So what I need to now start doing is adding more sections. So you can see I can add a profile section. If I click on more, you will see it allows me to build a resume and that type of thing. So let's add a profile section. That allows you to then sort of show what information you want to add. So you can add licenses, certificates, you can add courses, you can add recommendations, for example. Also, you can add any volunteer experience that you've got, anything that you've published, any projects, anything like that, languages that you can speak, any tests that you've completed. So for example, if you've been certified in a certain online language like R or Python, you would add what your test scores were here over there. Why this is important is obviously coming again, 
back to recruiters. So this is where recruitment companies would go in and find people with scarce skills. So if, for example, you've got experience working with Python or with R package, this is where you would specify that information. And it's very important for companies to be able to search and find that. So you would go in, oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. I would go in and say, um, where did I find it? Licenses and certificates. I would say, so which is the company? Let's say that it is, um, Google, and it is Python. So you can see it already knows, I've not even finished typing it, and it's Introduction to Programming or Python Coders. So let's say it's just an Introduction to, po to Python. It is obviously a Google software, so it's, because I've typed in Google, it's saying, oh, I recognize that name. Is it Google, the technology company? Yes, it is. I would then say, when was it issued to me? So I could say it was January of 2023. When does it expire? A lot of the times, because software is developing and changing so quickly, it wants me to specify what the expiry date is. So the license typically would be six months or a year. So let's say it expires in December 2020, ooh, 2023, not 2023. Now, because I'm saying that I'm certified and it's a known certification, it's going to ask me for my ID and my URL. So obviously I don't have that because I don't know anything about Python. But if I was able to do that, this is where I would add my ID. So on my certificate, I will get a number and then I will get a URL. So that is obviously from a Python perspective, it's a recognized URL that and a recruiter would be able to click on and verify that it is me, George Honeyball. This is when I um, did the programming course. This is when it was issued and this is the expiry date. And once I've completed all of that, I would add the skill and it would then be shown if somebody goes to my licenses and certificate section, that is where um, it is going to appear. I'm going to discard it because obviously I don't have a programming in Python certificate. But hopefully that answers the, the question. Really good questions. I like the flow that we're getting. Um, Lisa, any other questions that have come in before I go on to the next section? Uh, yeah, I think we can probably just uh, do one more question before you carry on. Um, yes. So a uh, person has asked, um, where within LinkedIn would you list conferences if you've spoken at any? So if you've spoken at conferences, um, personally, I mean, I haven't done that. Um, what's interesting though is I've got a video of a conference that I spoke at. So I actually spoke to the LinkedIn conference a few years ago. It was published on YouTube. So I actually shared the link to the YouTube video on my profile. So that is the sort of shortcut way that I would do it. Um, so Basically, if you go into resources, you could add your network, you could add activity, or you could add items. So if you click on my items, you would be able to go and share it over there. So obviously, I'm not going to do that now because I don't have it in this profile. But if you go to my LinkedIn profile, um, Lise will share the, the link with you a little bit later. You will see where I shared the YouTube link in my profile over there. Also what you can do, what a lot of people do is they will post in their activity. So you can go into a post over here, um, you would create a new post. Um, let me just go to home quickly and show you where you would do that. So you click the start a post, you would be able to put in a video. If it's an event, you could put the event over there. That way people know that they can join you. Um, or if it's just a photo of yourself, you could post it over there. What you can also do is you can pin that to your profile. So if it is a big event and you're really proud of the fact that you spoke at that conference, you would be able to pin it to your feed. So if people go in and look at your profile, they will see that you spoke at that event and it's pinned to the top of your profile over there. Obviously, if it is upcoming, people will be able to book and join. Um, so for example, with this event, you'd be able to advertise this event on LinkedIn, 
with the link to allow people to subscribe and sign up. Or a lot of people, they have their own events that they run through LinkedIn. So if it's on a website, they put their website link, or they could actually host it in a LinkedIn environment as well. So with LinkedIn video feeds and things like that, you can now host events in LinkedIn. So that's also a fairly new functionality that's available. And then you can see already, because I chose Penguin um, Random House yesterday, you can see already I'm starting to get feeds from some of the companies that I've selected. Lise, should I carry on? Or are there any more questions? Uh, well, we, we do have plenty of questions, but I think if, if you want to carry on with your demonstration, George, then what we can do is we can we can pick up those great. questions again um, towards the end. So, uh, yeah, okay. if you just want to crack on, that would be great. Fantastic. I think we've only got another five or ten minutes. So just once again confirming LinkedIn is using your profile to earn revenue. So you can see based on the information that I've completed, Already, I'm getting adverts sent through to me. So you can see it says promoted. So this company called Supporting Accountants have paid LinkedIn to show this advert to me based on my profile. Just the very, very little bit of information I've shared already because of where I worked and where I'm physically situated. Supporting Accountants communicate effectively have already reached out to me. And then LinkedIn also inviting me to place ads myself. So they are basically using their marketing material to encourage me to market. If I go down now, so you will see, um, remember I followed Tata Project, so they liked this, so that's why this is appearing over there. I'm following Penguin, so remember I've not followed any people yet, but now you see LinkedIn has picked up that I've not added my phone yet. So it's very interesting that in the feed, it's reminding me what I need to do to complete my profile. So if I keep going, so similar to people to follow, I can keep going and LinkedIn is going to keep feeding information through to me. So you can see this is going to keep going. Remember, I follow Transport for London. So now what I can do is I can like this, I can comment on it, I can repost it. So what would happen is that this would then appear in my feed as if I posted it, or I can comment on it as well, or I can send it to somebody else. So I will typically get a link over here. So you, here you see something really cool. Um, it's a Transport for London brand, and they're using Lego, basically, to showcase Transport for London. So that's really cool. So let's say I want to like it, so I can give the little thumbs up, I can clap hands, I can show support, or I can just love it. So let's say that I love that. And I can comment here and say it was really great, but I'm not going to post that now because um, then people are going to start engaging with me. Also, you can see the system recommends people for me. Typically, this will be based on other people that I have followed or people that have followed me. So over time, the system will continually improve the connections. Also, what some people do is through LinkedIn, they will send me an invitation to join as well, which you can do. Likewise, you can eventually start sending emails to people. And what will happen is, I'm not going to do it now, but next time I sign into LinkedIn, LinkedIn will say to me, George, we noticed that you don't have many followers. Do you want us to share with all of your contacts that you joined LinkedIn? So what it will do is I will give a permission to go into my Gmail account and basically it will go through all of my contacts and send them an email to say, George would like to connect with you on LinkedIn. Is this good or bad? I personally would not like to do something like that. If I want to join with people on LinkedIn, I want to have control of it. I don't want LinkedIn to send emails to all of my contacts on my behalf. But some people want to do that. So if they want to grow their profiles aggressively, that is something that you can do. So um, basically here you can see this has been promoted. So similar to what you see up over here. So these adverts are, are a lot cheaper. The more expensive adverts are these ones. So you can see Visa have paid a lot of money for LinkedIn to advertise this over here. And you can see this. So typically what Visa wants me to do, first of all, they want me to follow them 
but more importantly, they want me to read the study and learn more. Obviously, hoping that in time, if, for example, I'm offered at the bank to choose between a Visa and a MasterCard, Visa will stick in my mind and say, oh, I'd like a Visa card, please, not a MasterCard. Then, once again, it's all about marketing um, and using marketing on multiple channels. Um, I've spoken for another five minutes. I'm just going to have a quick sip of water. Um, Lisa, while you hopefully give me another question. I'm going to sort of kind of just combine two questions into one for you here. So, yeah. um, so they've asked, um, what are the most important elements when it comes to personal branding um, and also employer branding? Okay, great. So those are good questions. So I'm just going to go back to my profile again. Um, so obviously when it comes to your profile specifically, so remember what LinkedIn is all about. It is a professional platform. So very much about your job title, the work that you do, and the company that you work for. So obviously, because I've not chosen the correct CIM, I don't have a logo here, which is not cool, okay? So ideally, when you work for a company, like you see here, the Coca-Cola company, it's a recognized brand, it's well known. Um, I've not really explained in a lot of detail what I've done there. So if you want to make your profile more comprehensive and really professional and good, you need to add a lot more content over here. So the first thing that I need to do is get CIM to update their business profile. So nobody in CIM has actually created a CIM account and set up the company and registered it. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes how you can do it. So if you've got your own company, if you're a small business owner, really important for you to create your market, your company on LinkedIn. It is different to your website. So you can link your website to your LinkedIn um, company profile, but you need to set it, set it up separately. So first of all, make sure that the companies that you're associated with are recognized on LinkedIn. Then that you've got, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, a good job title. So when you're choosing your job title, make sure it is not something weird, that it's a spelling mistake or something like that, because when recruiters are searching for senior managers in a marketing company, you want them to find you. Then, as I mentioned earlier, and I skipped over this process, and it's really important, so I'm just going to go back. So just remember, wherever you see the little pen or pencil, that allows you to edit it. So I'm going to go into the experience. I'm going to click on the pen. I now go to the senior manager and click on that. And the system will allow me to go and update and provide more information about the description here. So I can type in here exactly what the job entailed. So I was running campaigns um, in, in involving um, global companies. And you'd be able to sort of and type spelling mistakes don't help. Um, Involving, it's weird that it didn't pick up that I was making typos. And you can see I've only used 36 characters out of 2,000. So the company, the system is expecting me to update this as much as possible. Also, what's really important is a lot of companies are integrated with LinkedIn. So they will advertise a job in LinkedIn. And what you'll see, let's actually go there. Now, I'm not going to save this. Um, if I now go and search for jobs and I find a job that I like, now remember I said I'm a senior manager, so LinkedIn now will try and find jobs with the title senior manager in it. So here it says senior manager, partner potential for Michael Page. Um, so I can then bookmark this, I can view it, and I can apply for it as well. So if I click on this over here, you will see in certain instances I can apply for this job. Now, what sometimes if I've got my LinkedIn profile up to date, I don't even need to use a CV. I can select apply for it and I can say through the LinkedIn recruiter, please use my, my LinkedIn profile to apply for the job. So once again, I don't need to send Michael Page my CV. They can use my LinkedIn profile to see what I've done. So if my LinkedIn profile is as up to date as my CV is, Michael Page will be able to access all of my LinkedIn information and know 
that it's completely up to date. Also, what's really nice is you can see based on my profile, LinkedIn has promoted this and recommended this to me. And it also tells me how many people have already applied. So you can see here, we've had three applicants. Nobody's applied for that job there. Price Waterhouse Coopers PwC is very popular. that They've already had 15 people applying for that position. So LinkedIn is completely integrated. Um, the last thing I want to do before I jump to the next question, remember I spoke about creating a company profile. A lot of people don't know how to go in and create a company profile. They go to their profile and they search around and they try and find it. It gets very confusing. So here's another tip for you very quickly. And um, remember, you can go in and change your URL over here. Another really good tip, you can click down over here. Sorry, let me just change the size quickly. And if you go right down to the bottom over here, you see create company page. So this is the place that you can go to to create your own company page. So if I click on that profile, I can go in and create my own company profile. I can associate my email addresses with this. I can associate my um, website address with that. And very importantly, when I say that I work for this company and I've uploaded my beautiful logo or icon, that will appear next to my name as opposed to the ugly sort of nondescript does not exist icon that is next to my name right now. I think um, we'll just take one more question, George, if that's OK, and then we'll sort of kind of go into a little bit more of a just a, a very short Q&A session afterwards. So. Um, why does LinkedIn sometimes not recognize organizations when you add a list to share in a post, for example, if, if someone um, maybe might put their university or, or yes. something like that? Okay, so that is exactly to the point that we were just talking about. They've not gone in and created their company profile on LinkedIn. So it is not like Google. So remember, Google will go and search on the internet for companies and recognize them. So when you search for companies, they built up in Google. In LinkedIn, you need to actually advertise your company on LinkedIn. So you need to go in and create it. So typically, it would be the marketing team in the company that would do that. But if it's a small company and you don't have a marketing department, it is responsible for you to do it. Similar to a university, the university would need to go in and create their profile on LinkedIn. And once they've created it, you will see you have a separate section for educational institutions because obviously they don't want people to create fake accounts. So they would go in and say that somebody could go in and create Harvard University and they could say they got this qualification from this Harvard University but obviously it's not the official Harvard University. So that is something LinkedIn is very careful about. But here you see what the company page would look like. So I clicked on the company, and here you can see you can create your email address. Um, you need to specify the organization size, choose your logo, explain what it's about. And very importantly, you need to click this to say that you're an authorized representative of the organization to post your company information on LinkedIn. So hopefully that answers the previous question. Okay, we've perhaps maybe got time for just sort of maybe one or two more questions, if that's okay. Um, so we'll, we'll just sort of kind of go right back to the the, the very beginning um, of uh, of the demonstration there, where you mentioned uh, you mentioned about um, premium LinkedIn. Yes. Um, sort of what's your thoughts on it? Do you, do you think it, it's actually worth paying for premium LinkedIn membership? So I think for, for people that might be job hunting specifically, I do know that premium membership allows you to view the profiles, not necessarily the names of other people that have applied for the jobs, but the caliber and the types of people that have applied for similar jobs. Also, I don't know quite how it works, but you can get priority listing. So you will view job adverts before non-paying members um, have done as well. Obviously, because I might work for Microsoft, I get additional functionality. So, for example, from a marketing perspective, as I explained a little bit earlier, I can send people something called an in-mail, I-N-M-A-I-L. So I'm sure some of you might have received them 
in the past as well. So basically, people pay LinkedIn and they can then send people messages directly to LinkedIn. So not to their emails, but to the actual LinkedIn message channel. You can pay to send people to those, um, sorry, send messages to people directly in LinkedIn. And you can use the system to specifically target exactly who you're wanting to reach. So similar to what we saw a little bit earlier, it can be physically where the person is based. It can be based on their qualifications or certificates or experience. It can be based on the companies that they've worked at. So for example, you don't even need to be working at the company now. You can search for anybody that ever worked for Google or worked for Microsoft and lives in London and have got this qualification or this experience. So LinkedIn will then give you 100 people that you can contact and you can then type up a lovely little message and the system is really good. You, you can say, please use the person's first name. So it will say, dear George, I'm just writing to make you aware of this MBA course. We've had other people from Google and Microsoft that have shown an interest in it. If you would like to know more, please contact me on my email address or go to my website. And they could then send that as an advert. So in that instance, the premium membership is really good. Um, also, for example, a lot of people love to see who can, who's viewed their profile in the past to see how well, for example, the profile updates and things work. If you don't have, if you haven't paid, you see very limited information about who's viewed your profile in the past. If you have a premium membership, you can see exactly who has viewed your profile and when they viewed it as well. So those are the benefits of it. What's really nice is I think for the first two or three months, you don't need to pay a cent, so you can try it out and see if you like it, and then you can cancel it after two or three months with no problem. So it is something you're welcome to try out and see um, if, if it works for you and if not. Okay, lovely, thank you. And uh, I think we've got time for, for just one last question. Um, I think it's, it's a very apt question, actually, just to sort of kind of finish on. Um, so uh, what are the current and upcoming LinkedIn trends uh, that we need to look into uh, for the algorithm um, and also for gaining more reach? So, yes, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of fatigue at the moment. I think a lot of people, even companies like uh, Meta or Facebook, are kind of running out of new fresh sources of information so i think to really differentiate yourself from everybody else on linkedin really important that you publish fresh content so if you're writing articles if you're writing blog posts if you're posting fresh content showcase it on linkedin what some people do is they will have their own website and they will write a daily or a weekly blog and you can then share that either through your marketing page on LinkedIn or directly in your profile, but really good to do that. So from a statistical perspective, it is amazing. So I got this directly from LinkedIn, 90, 90%. So the vast majority of people do not post anything on LinkedIn. They're purely going on and viewing information. 9% of people, so remember we've got 90% that just observe and view. 9% of people actually interact with content that's been posted, so they like things, like what I did, they will post comments, they will share it with other people, that's 9%. Only 1% of people on LinkedIn actually post fresh content. So if you start doing that on a regular basis, you're literally only 1% of LinkedIn's population. That is how you will get noticed on, on the, the platform. So post content, publish articles, um, even collaborating with other people. It's really wonderful now from a scientific journal perspective. If you publish scientific journals, not just you, but your co-authors, you can showcase and work with them and publish articles and content together on LinkedIn as well. And if you're wanting to do that, feel free to reach out to me. I can show you how to do it. It's not that difficult. And yes, I know we're at time. I've really enjoyed the session. Sorry that I've not been able to see you, um, but thank you for the great questions. And Lee, thank you to you and to CIM for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. 
and hopefully we'll meet up again sometime either in person or here virtually again great thanks ever so much george and you know same to you thank you very much uh, for for doing today's webinar for us we've had some some lovely comments actually that have come in to say that it's been a really insightful uh, session really helpful people have picked up some great tips so um so yeah there is a, a wealth of information there so um please do go and have a look um when we uh, post the um the recording up on our youtube channel uh we watch so that you can um get all of those tips and i think we're all going to go off and um you know be fiddling around with our, our linkedin uh, profiles for the for the rest of the afternoon to uh, to try and <laughs> So that's great. So thanks ever so much, George. Um, really, really much appreciated. Uh, um, I would like to say um, a final thank you to George once again uh, for delivering uh, an absolutely fantastic session. And we really do hope uh, that you've enjoyed uh, the demonstration um, and that you've been able to uh, to gain some handy tips um, and take forward and apply uh, to your own LinkedIn profile. On behalf of CIM, just leaves me to say um, a final thank you to you for joining us today um, and all throughout uh, the year as well. Uh, we really do hope that you have enjoyed them. So um, just leaves me to say, take care everyone. And uh, we do hope to uh, see you again uh, when the new season starts up again in a few months time.